Well, Mark, let's start with John Pemberton. Um, he's been relieved of his duties and, and leaves the football club. What are the reasons behind that? Before I go into those reasons, I think it's uh, only appropriate that I take this opportunity to thank John uh, for the four years service he's given to the football club. Uh, and on behalf of myself, the board and our major shareholder, Steve Lansdowne, I'd formally like to thank John uh, for the significant contribution that he has made in that period. But yes, we have made a change uh, and I can understand why supporters will ask why we've made that change and specifically why we've made that change right now. Any change of that magnitude is not an easy decision, let me say that first of all. Uh, and any decision of that magnitude is not taken without real care, consideration and consultation with all key stakeholders inside the football department, whether that be players, whether that be staff, whether that be other key members of the team. So having um, had discussions with uh, the staff and understanding what we thought would be a positive impact on the team, following the Burton game, um, which was a frustrating result, a game which we believe we should and, and could have easily won, the board sat down and discussed how we could impact, how could we help, how could we improve, what things could we do differently. We've spoken to Lee uh, a while ago now in regards to next season. Um, it's a process that happens every year. Uh, and Lee came back and talked to us about he would like to make a change to his coaching setup next season. And his coaching setup next season would not include John Pemberton. And um, that's Lee's decision. That's how he wanted to set up. So after the Burton game, we spoke to Lee uh, and said to Lee, look, we believe we need to make a positive impact. We need to have a dynamic change now. If the decision was already made to change in the summer, we suggested to Lee that perhaps it would be better to make that change now. And particularly as we had a young, hungry, dynamic Jamie McAllister in the door, we believe that that would have a positive impact uh, on the dynamic of the squad and the environment. Lee considered that. Uh, and sensibly agreed to that. He said, yeah, I can understand why we should do that now. Let's do it. We then sat down with John uh, and had discussions. John being John, shook our hands and said, yeah, OK, it's time to move on. You've decided to make a change uh, and was extremely professional. The timing of the announcement came just before the Norwich game. What was the, the reasoning behind that, the thinking behind that? Because there were obviously a lot of mumblings within the room I'm in at that time. Again, it's a question that I can understand supporters asking. Um, once we'd spoken to John, um, we have to do and follow due process. Um, you know, in a world where legalities rule, we have to make sure the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed, so to speak. So we were in the middle of a process uh, of agreeing John's exit. And while we're in that process, we just physically can't come out and, and, and communicate as we would like to. Trust me, we would like to, but we just can't. Um, I was very keen to make sure that before the Norwich game, we got something out and we at least explained to fans that John was not gonna be in the dugout and he'd left the football club because I didn't feel that was appropriate that simply he wasn't there. Um, so we did that um, on the basis that the I's would be totted and the T's would be crossed this morning so that we could put a further statement out and I could have this opportunity to speak directly to the supporters and give a little bit more context and depth to the difficult decision that we'd made. Jamie McAllister, I mean, Lee Johnson said it himself, he hasn't got the grand experience of a coach yet. He's still up and coming. Um, what was the reason behind appointing him into the first team setup rather than, say, an external appointment with, with grand experience? I think Jamie's been here, what, just under a year now with us. Um, he's someone who knows this football club very well. Um, has experience of recently playing still. Um, he's a very young, hungry, dynamic young man, let alone coach. Um, he's well respected by the players uh, and well respected by the staff and liked also by both sets of people. And I think the fact that Jamie's been here for a period of time, he knows the players, he knows the staff, he knows the club. With 10 games to go, or 11 as it was, with the Norwich game included, it was important if we were going to make that change, I think that we gave someone as, as best head start as we possibly could. And with Jamie's background knowledge of Bristol City Football Club and again of the players and the staff, I think he was the perfect choice. Again, he is energetic, he's enthusiastic, he's a really good communicator um, and I believe he'll have a positive impact on the first team environment. Des Taylor also left the football club. What were the reasons behind that? 
Um, let's be clear, the two aren't linked. Um, Des has simply moved on to join another football club. Um, we've been in those discussions with Des now for a couple of months uh, and we felt that it was an opportune time simply to, to announce that, that Des had moved on. He leaves the football club uh, with our best wishes uh, and good luck for the future. Des, is he going to be replaced in, in the scouting setup and what happens to the under 23s now Jamie's with the first team? Uh, 23s, Alex Ball will pick up and Alex will run with the 23s until the end of the season, at which point we will review and sit down and discuss how we move forward. The scouting department, as I've said time and time again, is not about one person. It's about a team, it's about a collective. Des was part of that collective. Yes, we will look to replace. That process is already underway, um, but it is a recruitment team. So that process that's in place will not change. It will continue to develop uh, and move forward. Ten games to go. Um, Bristol City currently occupy the relegation zone. What is needed between now and May 7th to ensure Bristol City are above that line? Unity, focus, discipline and determination. We know where we are and let's be really clear, we are fully understanding that results, particularly in the second half of the season, simply haven't been good enough. Performances at times have been good. Uh, and we could all argue that there but the width of a post, we could be in a different position, but we're not. So I would just reiterate to fans and supporters alike that we're not hiding away from this. We're very aware of what we need to do and very determined to pull ourselves out of this, regroup and then move on. But it's about the here and now. And I firmly believe, having been in similar types of positions as this in my career in the past, the only way out is unity, focus and determination. I think supporters have been fantastic here at Ashton Gate this season. Yes, fans have, have voiced their, their discontent um, over recent games, but they've done it in a sensible manner. Um, and they have every right to do that. I have no issue with that whatsoever. But right now, the team needs its supporters and it needs them to be positive. And particularly in the second half yesterday, this place came alight again. We have to make sure as a team that Lee, his staff and his players continue with the energy and drive that we saw in that second half against Norwich. I believe if we continue in that vein, we'll be OK. But everyone needs to be in it together. Now is not the time uh, for division. Now is the time for unity. Because together we can pull ourselves out of this. Together we can move forward. It's the only way.